Hey, hey, good morning. Hey, I'm back here at the Axon Lathe, and some videos back, I reground the jaws on a six inch three jaw chuck that I adapted to this axle set. So let's have a look at it, and I'll talk a little bit more about this chuck. Now, this chuck here was uh, on a South Bend Heavy 10. That was out at the community college here, and I purchased the lathe when they uh, decided to get rid of it. And uh, the chuck was just uh, really in bad condition at the time. Well, it, it's worn. So I went through the chuck and uh, tightened everything up. Uh, I talked about in earlier videos how the pinions push the scroll into the front half and cause the, uh, the scroll itself to cock. And then it starts wearing excessively on the pivot. So this chuck here, I re-sleeved the pivot and it splits down the middle here of the pinions. And uh, I machined it a little, I machined the inside where it was worn, and then I machined probably the front and a little bit off the rear, just a few thousandths to tighten up the scroll. And I got uh, about two thousandths clearance on the pivot and two thousandths in play on the scroll. And the, and the chuck's really pretty tight. You don't want to get uh, much tighter on that. <laughs> that aside, I, this chuck here um, is a rear mount chuck, a standard rear mount chuck. And I took and I drilled it through from the front to make it a front mount chuck. And I also, like I say, this is just a standard Cushman. It's a Cushman that was on a, about a 1960 South Bend. And I believe it was original to the machine. It could have been anyway. And also, this, this thing had about a one inch hole. And I punched it out to two inches. And <laughs> I don't know if you can see in there. But there was some internal screws there that hold this thing together. And I eliminated them. Uh, and I figured I could get away with it because I have six uh, big, uh, bigger, well, they're five sixteenths bolts holding the thing together. And keeping it in mind, I, I use it for uh, light duty work, of course. So let's, uh, let's see how it's holding up from the last grind. And I hope you're all doing good. Yeah, we had a couple of days of really good weather and it was real nice to get out, but supposedly we got one more week of maybe snow. So I hope your weather is going to be good. I'm not sure how it is going to be here. They're often wrong. Okay, so we'll crank on over here. <laughs> uh, this is a fun machine. I really enjoy it. I'm not okay. And we're going to see how it does. Now all these uh, test pieces are precision ground. Okay, this one here is, let's see how big that is. That is 1.3 inches. Okay, almost an inch and 5 sixteenths. Get that in there. And I got a master pinion here and I marked it. It's right there. This is the one that I used to uh, remove the least amount of material. Now, I'm taking and I'm kind of actually burnishing the jaws just a little bit doing this. I got a little bit of tension on this piece and I'm rolling it towards the back. Okay, then I'm going to tighten it enough to machine it. Okie dokie. And we'll bring over this old indicator set up here. I, I usually use an inner rapid on a flex bore, but I think this is easier to read. 
This is a uh, federal indicator, actually a dual reading. Metric and um, English. Okay, let's see how that is. I think you can see that. I hope there's not glare. Let's see how much uh, run out there is. Looks to me about one half thousandths. Okay. All right, let's get that out of there. It might be best to open the chuck on other than the master pinion to try to uh, even out that wear. I try to do that, but I don't always. Okay, we're going to go to the next size smaller. That is, I think it's, uh, yeah, 7 eighths. This is uh, a, a precision ground counter shaft out of a transmission. But I don't know... Uh, uh, just what it went into, it, but it's new and unused. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm rotating it. Oh, but I'm not on the right pinion. Let me get over there. It's always the last one, isn't it? There it is. Okay, now I'm going to kind of burnish that in there a little bit. Rotate it. Let me get that out of the way. Rotate a little bit. See, that kind of takes up that slack in the jaws. There we go. Tighten it enough to machine it. All right. Get that indicator back on there. We'll see where we're at. Okay. Uh, hope you can see that. I don't think there's much glare. I'm trying to look through the, the camera. Okay, got it on zero. Let's see what we get. Just about one thousandths here. No, it's a half thousandths. Okay, we're doing half, <clears throat> half thousandths here. Okay, we'll take that out. And I've been using this chuck. I've been making parts with it. It's really handy to have this chuck for smaller stuff. Especially if you're getting your hands close to the jaws. Like the 8-inch there, those jaws are choppers. This here is, uh, these one-piece jaws are not, don't protrude as far. Okay, we'll set that down. And we'll take one of uh, Rob's uh, 3 8 ejector pins, which are a factory-made thing and expensive. Okay. Went over and saw Rob today, and he's uh, doing good. I'm going to go over Monday, and he bought a really cool little milling machine. Uh, he found a Rockwell uh, that's just in excellent condition, and maybe he'll let me show it to you. He's got a few more things to sell, and uh, I'm going to help him uh, as best I can with that plastic mold equipment and support equipment. So I'll shoot a video of that and uh, put it on the channel here. And uh, so it can be referenced to from like Craigslist and other things. So you can, you know, you can put an ad on Craigslist and go, uh, yeah, email me for a video. <laughs> Contact me for a video. You can't put a link on Craigslist. All right, what do we got here? Oh, one thousandths. Why, that's just terrible. No, one thousandths is real good. <laughs> it's great. I start getting kind of not happy uh, when they start getting close to three thousandths. So I'm going to try it again. I'm going to burnish it a little bit. You, you got to figure that the jaws contact a little differently <clears throat> on uh, different diameters. Okay. And then uh, the jaws in a different position on the scroll. Did I make it worse? Uh, about a thou. Maybe a little tiny bit more. One more time. 
Okay, we'll try that. We'll do it one more time. Oh, gotta feel it. It feels real good. There we go. You can kind of feel it get bumpy. And it, you want to keep turning it so it doesn't feel bumpy. You find a good spot to land on. Oh, one half thousands. Okay. Coming around here. Now that's proven performance. Yes. And uh, I don't think there's a better way to do this. Now, using that fixture there. That was shown on an old, old film over 80 years ago. And uh, it's a factory uh, way of doing it. And I, I'm glad to share this with you. And I, I showed after use, I, I did on my other channel, <clears throat> the eight jaw, eight inch, three jaw right there on the right. And it's holding the same tolerances. Uh, that chuck I didn't have to rebuild, it's just that the jaws were worn on it. Okay, I'm gonna oh, be back in a second. That's right, folks. You can vacuum your entire car with your exhaust. I would suggest getting one for every vehicle. And it makes a great gift too. Okay, now back here, if I can get around, is an old time Nikon F camera made in the late 1960s. And uh, they had this light meter on here. And back then it took batteries that go in this compartment that were mercury and they banned them. And these old devices like this had quite a high drain. So you could kind of burn through expensive uh, replacement batteries that uh, didn't work very well. And one of the things I did just to be able to keep using it was make an adapter. See that? I, I made it out of brass and uh, I could use cheap available batteries. But this type of battery doesn't last very long, so you just load up a couple of new ones every time you use it. And I have a plastic sleeve in there because I can use uh, two different sizes of these, uh, of these batteries. And that worked out real good. Now, the other thing, let's see the other thing fell down there, is, let me set this down here. <laughs> it's these. C size batteries, so these are the cheapest ones I can find. And uh, what I don't like about them is uh, hardly anything takes them. But this uh, SPI loop here um, has an accessory uh, light and it uses those terrible batteries. And I'll show you what I've done is I made an adapter uh, for these two. And um, let me get this uh, on here. Let's see it for double A batteries, which I uh, are generally available, very cheap. And uh, my uh, flashlight here uses them. And uh, I I have a rechargeable M1 with batteries, but I generally keep the one with batteries um, on me. Um, okay, so I made this adapter here, and you can stick the batteries in it, and I'll go ahead and do that. And I'll slip it in there. See if I can make it work. You can wrap batteries in cardboard too. See? And that's really nice to be able to do that. So you stick that in there and you can look, look at things. Yeah, see? <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So I thought that'd be a fun little uh, project to throw out there. And uh, I'm uh, very happy to use AA batteries in, instead of Site C. Okay, you guys have a great day. And uh, I've just got a bunch of stuff, little things to do. And I'll turn on the camera whenever there seems to be something. Okay, bye.